you're done editing your video and you want to export it as a finished video file, I'm going to show you the best quick export settings for general use, and then I'll be going deeper into the settings that you should tweak if you really want to get the highest quality. But first, to export, all you have to do is either go up to File, Export, Media, or hit Control or Command M. Here's where you can name your export, and you can also click on the blue location text to choose a location on your computer where the export will be placed. Now for the settings, if you just want something quick and good, unless you have specific instructions to export in a different way, I'd select H.264 from your format drop down here, and then under presets, select match source. This will take your sequence settings and match it while outputting either low, medium, or high bitrate. It's more complicated than this, but to simplify, you can think of it as low, medium, or high quality for small, medium, or big file sizes. So my suggestion is to choose match source, high bitrate, and then to look down here at the bottom and see how large your estimated file size is expected to be. And if you're happy with the file size, then high bitrate will be perfectly good if you're planning to share your videos on the internet. Most platforms like YouTube end up compressing your videos after you upload anyways. But if you're somebody who needs to maximize every bit of quality and you're not as concerned with how long the export will take, then I'd suggest going into the following settings. Open up the video dropdown here and you'll get even more options that you can adjust. And you can see that these have been grayed out, but if we uncheck this box over here, we can change them to our liking. And the first one is frame size. I'll choose UHD. Really, this is 4K just at 16 by nine. Even though this one up here says 4K, it's actually more of a cinemascope aspect ratio. Feel free to choose this if your aspect ratio is normal 16 by nine, even if it's lower resolution like 1080p, or for example, my timeline is at 1440p, because my screen captures look best on a timeline that matches my monitor's resolution. Even though it's a different export resolution, what this is gonna do is upscale your final result. It won't magically make it 4K, but it allows your final video to be played back in 4K, which will unlock some better quality compression on YouTube, for example. Next, leave your frame rate at whatever your timeline is set at. 24 frames per second might look more cinematic, but if you didn't plan for it and your timeline isn't set for it, you could introduce other abnormalities. The reason that I'm using a different frame rate is because this frame rate looks best, in my opinion, for screen captures like what I do mostly on this channel. Field order, keep progressive, and keep aspect to square pixels. Open up the more dropdown and make sure to select render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. This will make your render take longer, but it's well worth it in my opinion. Time interpolation, set to frame sampling, and performance set to hardware encoding. Next here, set your profile to high, your level to 5.2, export color space rec 709, and HDR graphics keep set to 203. And then finally, your bitrate is a heated discussion about what's best, but here's the truth, the higher the bitrate, the better quality you'll get, but at a diminishing rate of return, the higher that you go. So I'd suggest going to bitrate encoding and setting it to VBR2 pass. Some people say that CBR is better, but the main difference is CBR, constant bitrate, will give you the same bitrate through your entire video no matter what. Meaning one second of black will get the same amount of data as a one second complex scene like this. If you just wanna guarantee high quality and you don't care as much about a huge file size, feel free to go with CBR. But if you wanna to try to get Premiere Pro to be as efficient as possible, then go with VBR to allow it to pick and choose how much data to give. One pass will be faster, but two pass can result in a higher quality render at a lower file size, but it will take longer. Because I usually render overnight, I set mine to VBR two pass, and then the bit rate is another heated debate. If you choose CBR, you'll only have target bit rate, but under VBR, you'll have target and maximum. Target bit rate is what you're telling Premiere Pro to try to stay at, almost kind of like a minimum in our example, but not quite. And maximum bit rate is the most that you'll allow Premiere Pro to go. If you move both around, you'll notice that target bit rate will be the only one to actually change the anticipated file size while maximum bitrate will more likely impact the time it takes for your overall render to happen. If you're rendering 4K UHD to YouTube, a lot of resources suggest that you won't notice a difference above 35 megabits per second. But if you're exporting for a client who will be using this for another method, maybe showing this on a big screen, etc., you could get a lot of benefit from exporting at a higher bitrate. But on the other side of the equation, I'll show you a reason to choose a lower bitrate. This is a podcast episode I exported that's more than two hours long. And if I go down to bitrate settings, I'm only set to VBR one pass at nine megabits per second, and the export file size is anticipated to be 10 gigabytes already. In fact, with this example, the target bitrate is actually gonna match pretty closely with the resulting file size in gigabytes. So setting it to 35 would get me about a 37 gigabyte file size, and 50 would get me up to 53 gigabytes. 
This is way too much in my opinion, which is why I ended up reducing it down to nine megabits per second. And if you wanted to see what a video exported at nine megabits per second looks like on YouTube, you can check out my podcast channel to see for yourself. All of these videos were exported with roughly the same method. And even though I wouldn't find it acceptable to deliver for a client, in my opinion on YouTube, this is totally worth the trade-off for me in this case. And lastly, we can go to the audio section and the default should be fine, but you can pause and make sure that yours are the same as mine here if you'd like. But now the final thing that we're gonna do is save our work so that we don't have to do it all next time. And you can do that by saving it as a preset. Go up here to preset and you'll see three little dots beside your dropdown. Click it and then select save preset. Choose a name for it and then when you save it, if you go back, you'll be able to see it right here ready for you to select for all of your future exports. But before we actually export our video, it's important to make sure that we've set our in and out points. So we're telling Premiere what we actually want to export. So if we go back to the edit section so we can see our timeline, you can set your out point by going to the very last frame that you wanna be included and hit the O key. An endpoint will automatically be set at the very first frame, but if you've constructed your video so that it actually starts a little while after the very first frame, sort of like this, you can manually set your endpoint by going to the very first frame and hitting the I key. This is important because if you don't tell Premiere Pro what you wanna export, by default, it'll just include everything that's on your timeline, even if you have stuff like this accidentally left over after your edit. Then once you're ready, you can either click export or send to Adobe Media Encoder. If you choose export, this entire process will happen within Premiere Pro, and you won't be able to use Premiere at all while this is exporting. But if you send to Adobe Media Encoder, this process will happen in an external program, and once you click this little play button to start the export, you're able to do things like go back to your project, save it, close it, open up a different one, and generally it gives you a little bit more flexibility to use your computer while the export is still taking place. You may also find that if you have errors exporting in Premiere Pro alone, the same export might take place without any problems just by sending it to Adobe Media Encoder. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe and check out this video for even more Premiere Pro tips.